Yeah, so welcome to the, the, the SPI BOF. Uh, so even though it's a BOF, uh, so I'm basically just following BL here. So he's been doing that stuff forever, so um, seems to be working. Um, so he usually gives a presentation. Um, <laughs> so I put together some slides. Um, so I, I assume everyone here knows what SPI is, but basically when Debian needed some uh, you know, a, a, a organizational structure. They didn't create the Debian Foundation, um, but they created SPI um, to provide s such services to Debian, but also to other projects. Um, so the the current that's the the current uh, SPI board. Um, even though we actually host a lot of, uh, or, but we don't actually host the projects, but we provide services to a lot of uh, associated projects. Um, the people involved in SPI are still uh, mainly Debian people, um, and then we have the you know the SPI both at DebConf. Um, we've been trying to change that over the years, but it's just ex extremely hard for people who are not Debian to be elected, um, which to some degree is because the the membership of SPI are, are Debian people, um, and so as new projects get affiliated with SPI, we do encourage them to tell their people to join SPI as members so they can participate in elections. Um, so hopefully that's going to change over over the years, but right now most most people are are in some way or another affiliated with, with Debian. The, the only exception is Andrew Trichel. Um, and again, he, he is a big name, so that probably explains why, why he was elected. Um, but we have also other persons who are not Debian developers. So, so both? Yes. We had other, Debian, uh, other people on the board not being Debian developers. Yeah, we had some non-Debian people, that's right. Um, so the elections, so when, when uh, B-Dale talked last year, um, he said that the nominations are over, so I'm actually covering the elections from last year and this year. Um, and last year was a, was a big election, we had a, a lot of uh, turnover, and we actually had a lot of uh, interest. So last year I think we had 13 nominations, and, and a lot of them were from, from other projects. Um, and so we had uh, Luca, um, who's, who's here, um, we had Jimmy, who used to be uh, with, with SPI Return, um, he's also here, and then Andrew Trichel, as I mentioned, um, uh, rep, who's uh, affiliated with the Auto Pilot project, which is a new project affiliated with SPI, and then Valerie Young, um, who was actually, I think, recruited at, at DevCon last year. Um, and then this year, um, so Dimitri... Um, <laughs> Name and shame, right? Yeah. Shame, shame. Well, actually, I was actually going to thank you, but I can shame you <laughs> if that's what you want. So Dimitri, who, who was actually doing really great work, uh, unfortunately, uh, doesn't have a lot of time anymore, and so he, he decided to resign. Um, and then, so basically, um, we have nine board members, and usually what happens is that we have staggered board terms, so every year three people get elected. Um, so, so the board doesn't, you know, not the whole board changes at the same time, but because of resignations and, and just because of history, that those staggered board terms got sort of out of, out of whack. And so uh, Andrew Twitchell actually resigned voluntarily just to, to allow for free board seats, but then he ran again. Um, and then I, I was the only one who was really up for, for election. So, um, and then, I don't know, it's, it's very strange because last year we had 13 nominations. It, it really, if you look at the past years, it, it always really fluctuates a lot. And this year we had three slots and we had three nominations. And, and the third one was really only because I, I had to ping people and say, hey, we only have two candidates and three slots. Uh, <laughs> it's really going to be easy. Um, <laughs> so, so, so this year we didn't actually have a, have a vote, uh, which, which is quite a shame because we actually... Sorry? Spent the more of time on the voting system. Yeah, I was just going to say because, because we actually... <laughs> That's what I wanted to ask. Did you implement the new voting? Yeah, so we actually... So we actually <laughs> well, that was a waste of time. 
we actually changed to a new voting system um, and, and Noodles can, can implemented it um, and now we, we didn't Well, at least you're it. ready for next year, obviously, when you'll have 13 nominations. Well, I was just going to say next year we're going to find the bugs we could have found this year. But. Um, and, and so, like I said, so over the last few years we've had quite a bit of, of churn. Um, a, a lot of people who have been in, involved for a long time uh, left. Um, so Robert uh, Brockway, Solver, um, he used to be really active and he's done a lot of uh, work over, over the years. Um, but he, he didn't really have much time, so, so he resigned. And then Gregors Patterson uh, also resigned due to lack of time. Um, and then uh, Joshua Drake, uh, his term ran out. Um, and the same with B. Daniels, so his term ran out and he finally said, you know, I've, I've had enough after many, many, many years of serving as, as SPI president. Um, and, then, and then I mentioned Dimitri before who, who couldn't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> There's just too much <laughs> Um, so these are the, the current officers, but I, I should say we, we are having uh, officer appointments on Monday, so that, that may change. Um, so the, the membership, uh, so basically uh, everyone who, who contributes to free software and open source can, can, well actually everyone who agrees with SPI's mission can, can join. Um, and then everyone who has actually done work in the area can, can be a, a contributing member. Um, and one, one of the things we've been talking about for, for several years is, is that uh, a, a lot of the, the members aren't active and, and that normally doesn't cause issues but we're actually trying to get new bylaws um, adopted and, and there we, we need, need to reach quorum to, to get those adopted um, and, and that's really hard with a lot of inactive people. So again, um, Noodles kindly did the work to, to ping people who, um, who haven't voted or participated in, in a long time and, and, and made sure that the members are active. Um, of, of course, since then we haven't actually um, Put put the no put the the bylaws to a vote yet so maybe we need to rerun that again, Bradley. And, and just for clarification, this was worked out by a human. This noodle. I'm sorry. Just for clarification, I did this all for a joke. Uh, just for clarification, this work was done by a human. This noodles. That's a real person, not a bot. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, who's who's oh, sitting okay, over okay, over okay. there. I, yeah. For those who don't know in the room, uh, for uh, a number of months I thought the username Noodles on IRC was a bot. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, yeah, because because when you join, yeah, because when you when you join the meeting, it says, you know, if you, if your attendance will, if you want your attendance to be recorded, message the secretary who for a long time used to be Noodles, and he would, you know, just reply okay right. or note it. Um, so. Bradley thought that it was a bot. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, the membership is open. Uh, everyone who, um, who agrees with the principles can join and then becomes a non-contributing member. And then if, if you've done anything you know, significant for, for the, the free software source world, you can be a contributing member. So everyone who con contributes to Debian or, or another SPI affiliate project automatically you know, can, can be a, a contributing member. Um, so we, last year, um, we had a, a lot of new projects. Um, they're listed here and they're quite, quite varied, so quite interesting. Um, may, maybe I'm gonna highlight XORG, so they actually had their own foundation, their own nonprofit, and they basically said, you know, we, we don't wanna deal with, with, with the paper filing and stuff, and so we're just gonna join um, SPI and, and, and close it down. Um, so here are the, the projects. So we have about um, 46 projects right now. Um, some of them seem defunct. So, so that's something we actually need to, to figure out. What, what do we do with, with that? Um, so we've been um, trying to improve a lot of the, the governance. And, and one of the things we realized is, is that where, when, so when we accept a new project, you know, we have a conversation with them just to understand what they need, 
what the relationship is going to be. But one of the things we have historically not really done is, is to put provisions in place what's going to happen when the project can be contacted if it, you know, if it becomes defunct. Um, so we've been doing some work in that area and, and some of these probably aren't very active or, or aren't active at all and we, we should probably remove them so that's something that's going to happen at some point. Um, but, but obviously some of them are, are quite significant. So we have Debian with Postgres, uh, LibreOffice does, does uh, uses SPI for, for some of the work in the States. So I think that that's also something unique with SPI is that we don't, you know, projects can affiliate with SPI but also with other entities. So for example, LibreOffice, they have the Document Foundation, uh, which is their main home, but then they still use SPI for, for some of the the, the donations and reimbursements. Um, so one of the things we, we started doing, um, so obviously because a lot of the board are Debian people, um, so we often meet at DebConf, um, but, but we, we decided um, in 2016 um, to have a proper face-to-face -face meeting with, with uh, the board. Um, and, and that was really to, to talk about sort of big picture stuff in addition to the operations. So it was about, you know, what's the vision, what's the, what's the mission, uh, what's the strategy, what's the roadmap. Um, it, it's really good to, to be face to face and then also obviously, you know, focus on operations and, and just get stuff done. Um, so we had one um, last year um, and then we had another one earlier this year. Um, and, and this year we're actually going to have two um, and that's just because we decided to move it to like the September-October time frame because we always have the elections in July and so it really makes sense to do it just a few months after that to, to meet the, the new board members and, and to also get them involved. Um, and the, the other thing is that I should highlight that, that so the SPI so we hold money in trust for other projects. So we have you know, Debian earmark, uh, Postgres earmark, but then we also have the channel fund, which is uh, you know, SBI's money. And, and, and it's actually a question about what we should do with the channel fund, um, because it's getting quite, quite big. Um, and, and it's getting quite big because of some generous donations. So the Cra Craigslist Foundation has donated uh, a significant amount to us several times um, and Google also gave us some money um, and so we decided you know having having a face-to-face -face meeting may, makes us more effective get stuff done um, and we intend to to keep that once once a year so the financial status um, so so we actually we published a, an annual report this year so if you want to have the details you can take a look at that but the, the basic summary is that um, the income was about 400k. So those are donations to either projects affiliated with, with SPI or the, the SPI channel fund. Um, expenses were around 200k, um, leaving, it says net income, but, but it's really just a surplus um, of 220k. And so the, the total assets that SPI holds, so both for the projects and for ourselves, uh, is actually over a million now. So it's, it's quite, quite a significant sum, which also shows that, you know, it's not just a toy project anymore. We really need to get serious uh, about doing stuff properly. Um, uh, we really need to improve a lot of processes, um, get more rigorous and organized about doing things. Um, so the, the bookkeeping process, so that's, that's really one of the, the major areas where we want to improve because that's really the, the main, so SPI does a, a number of things. So we hold, you know, domain names, trademarks, um, projects can apply for trademarks through SPI with the help of SFNC. Um, we, we do a number of things, but the, the main task is really accepting donations for projects and then doing reimbursements when, when they spend the money. Um, so so the, the core is, is definitely around you know, the finances and, and those ha have been lacking in, in a number of areas. So for example, various projects have been asking for more detailed information about you know, regular reports and, and 
and, and more a more detailed view on, on which money is being spent on, on, on their behalf. Um, and, and so basically what we've been doing for, for the last one, one or two years, I guess, is, is to try to move uh, into a, a proper accounting system. And, and basically we chose Ledger CLI, uh, which is a, a, a command line based tools. And, and that may sound weird, but what we found um, with the website is that because the I mean, I, I should say that SPI, the board is really, are really the people who do stuff. It's not just the board is not just there for, for oversight, but it's also the people who do uh, a lot of the work. And hopefully that's going to change in the future. But that, that's how reality is at the moment. And 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 again, most of the board are, are you know Debian or Linux people. And if we use tools which Linux people like, then it's more likely for people to actually do stuff. So when we moved away from like the Plone website, which was like a, a CMS to something where you can just you know commit to a Git repository and, and, and the website comes out, we saw that people became much more actively involved. And we're basically trying to do the same with the, the financial process, having you know text files where you can re record stuff and command line tools. And, and it also makes it easier to automate. automate. Um, yes? And we also uh, moved to a sort of, a sort of um, bookkeeping, not, not a huge spreadsheet, but to also to these um, T-based accounts. And um, so we Yeah, it's like a proper double, double entry bookkeeping, system. Which um, helps us also to um, uh, to see that uh, we, we also um, have, have it quite easy now to see which assets are on which bank accounts and do they match to the uh, ledger CLI that that we are using. Mm, yeah, so 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 we're hoping to improve the the whole financial process, um, and one of the outcomes is going to be to have more regular reports, uh, which may sound quite ironic because since we've been working on the new process the the the, the frequent report stopped for a while um, but that's just as we as we migrate um, but in the future once we adopt that process uh, you know it's much easier to, to produce regular reports and it's also much easier to actually give access to the projects to you know whatever fine level of details they care about either we can do you know, custom reports for them, or we can actually give them, you know, access to the to each transaction, and and that was something which we couldn't really do before. Um, the other thing we're improving, um, and and I should I should say, so I, I should mention a few names because because um, so so Dimitri, who is unfortunately leaving, so he did a lot of work um, as well as as Martin Sobel, um, and the treasurer Michael Schulte is, uh, has been really involved and and helping to to move to that system. Um, I guess the key benefits that we found out from moving to the system was that we were able to automate the import of bank statements such that there is a reduced amount of manual work. Mm. We do have to keep constantly fix the scripts to import the transaction data from the bank online banking into the CLI ledger, but at least once we fix the scripts we import six months worth of data at the speed of your CPU, right? And that improved a lot, especially since we could import all of the bank accounts and the PayPal data and the click and pledge data such that all of our current revenue streams can be at least automatically allocated majority of things. The reimbursement process still needs more work, but yeah, you will talk about mm. it later. But at least we now are saving time for the treasurer because before treasurer had to do everything manually, but we now automated even like the checks deposit by hiring a service to process manual checks, right? And that helps to save time to do better stuff elsewhere. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I mean, that's the nice thing. A lot of the dead work can, can be automated with, with the right tools, which, which we know how to use. Um, so the other thing we, we are trying to improve is the reimbursement process. Um, and that's really where uh, uh, you know, a lot of the, most of the work is. 
And so, so Luca has been uh, improving the, the RT workflow um, by, by having a more guided process and by capturing more details, um, which again, it, once we do that, we, we can, you know, it makes it easier to generate the, like the ledger trans, um, transactions and stuff like that. Um, long term, we, we need some proper reimbursement system and there has been talk about adopting the one being developed by Software Freedom Conservancy, but that's not quite ready yet. So, mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing we're doing and, and that's really going to help is to, to get some paid help um, for reimbursements. Um, that's something which has been requested for, for a long time. Um, so we're basically initially going to have someone who's going to just check reimbursements to see you know, is the information complete, do we have bank details, things like that, are all the receipts attached, do the numbers match the receipts, those kind of things, because then it's, it's, it's much easier for, for the treasurer to actually do the payment. Um, that might sound strange, uh, strange to a few people here, why is that such a huge problem? SPI is doing um, a lot of uh, reimbursements that are not going to people living in the US or in, in somewhere in Europe, which makes it sometimes quite hard to get the um, additional forms. Some, some banks require additional forms for transferring money to a, to a person living in Brazil, Argentina or wherever. And um, that is the thing that's most time consuming and we hope to get that a little bit more streamlined by having someone helping us actually doing, collecting all this information. So um, Michael in the end just only needs to do the real transfer of the money. Mm -hmm. right. um, so basically in terms of improving the accounting process, what, what we're really working on is also to, to get away from a single point of, of failure. And unfortunately, SPI currently has, has quite a few of those. Um, so in the, you know, the, the treasure area, so Michael has been, you know, I mean, fantastic because most people aren't aware of how much work he does because most of SPI is reimbursements and all of them, you know, have been done by Michael. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it is a single point of, of failure. And, and we need to, to, to get away from that model. So we need to understand what the process is. We need to document it and, and just be more rigorous about it. And, and that's what, what we are trying to do. Um, and, and by moving to the ledger-based process, that's a, a good way to understand you know, how things have been working, what needs to be done, and, and, and using that as an opportunity to document things. Um, the, the other thing we need is, so SPI, for example, we don't really have an expense policy. Um, so the various projects like Debian, they may have an expense policy, um, or, although some projects don't. Um, but we, we need to give some, some guidance, um, both for projects that don't have an expense policy, and also now that we have face-to-face -face meetings, so we're actually spending money, we, we just need to have some guidelines or, or framework. The other thing we've been talking about is, so I mentioned that we have over a million dollars now. Um, so we should probably work on getting our financial uh, data reviewed or, or go through a proper audit. I, I don't think we're quite there yet, um, but, but, but we are moving to a system where that can be done. And, and I think we, we probably, you know, talk to a professional soon to see you know, to get some advice on improving our system so we can pass an, an audit in the future. Background to that is that also to, due to some laws within New York, we at one point need to have a financial audit right. and review. It's definitely something we, we will need. Um, but even if, even if it wasn't required, you know, we, it's something we want to do. So back on your point about the single point of failure mm -hmm. and mentioning Michael doing the reimbursements, um, I, I, I just want to let everybody in the room know where, in case you don't follow SPI General, there, there was a rather nasty thread in December um, about, about uh, delays of reimbursements. Uh, and I commented on that thread 
um, and uh, I'm not just trying to promote my post, but but if you if you want to read a non trolly uh, uh, email in that post, that may, may be one of the few. Um, but my, the point that I made in that post was that, that SPI is run completely by volunteers and all the work is done by volunteers. Um, as you know, I'm involved with Software Freedom Conservancy that has four employees. Um, we get complaints that we uh, take too long for reimbursements. We you generally always get them within 30 days, but people still complain. Um, so the fact that you all have been doing reimbursements all these years as volunteers, it's an incredible tribute to the volunteers that you have. And it was very distressing to see people complaining and people who aren't even heavily involved in SPI coming in and piling on or who weren't even owed a reimbursement. So I, so I, we have your back on that uh, if it comes up again, uh, certainly, and uh, I'll do that again if necessary. But uh, I just want to let other people know that threat happened and to watch out for stuff like that with SPI being criticized. We have to set expectations for a, a volunteer org. It, it, it's doing a great job for a volunteer org. Absolutely excellent job, really. I, on the other hand, can understand people waiting for mm. money and um, people um, also yeah, we uh, try. needing that money because right. not everyone has the financial background to cover for over several months uh, oh. the cost of several flights. I uh, agree completely and, and we deal with that at Conservancy as well but what I found is people will always be stressed out about that right and, and we get people complaining in 10 days you know if, even if we're hitting 15 days it, it just always happens that way so it's understandable but we have to, we have to be fair to the org it's a volunteer org. This is our number one service, and SLA on our number one service could be improved. So th this is for us to strive to be better. And, and like if SPI can get quicker expense reimbursement, the, the whole, everything else, people will be happier in general, right? So, sure. Uh, but for us, I don't, know, I don't know how it compares to Conservancy, for example, but in SPI, we really do have people who take out loans to pay for flights, which they then await reimbursement for, yeah. and then they're charged interest, and and when you hear that, it's just it just starts to be mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so one solution that, that we started doing a couple of years ago, at Conservancy is pre is telling people they can pre-book flights with us. Um, mm -hmm. So we started doing that a lot. Um, and from my point of view, if people don't identify themselves, they were told when they were given the, the equivalent of a bursary and told, we can pre-book your flight, and then they don't take advantage of that. I, I don't have a tremendous amount of sympathy mm -hmm. if, if they turn around and say, well, now the reimbursement's less than 30 days. The hard part about that, by the way, is you'll need, you'll need a credit card for the org, which is very hard to get. Uh, Conservancy's credit card actually still has my personal credit on the line. Because um, <laughs> it, it, it's very hard as a nonprofit to get credit. So, mm -hmm. um, so if somebody's willing to do that, then you could do it that way. Yeah, right now we have a debit card which can be used for the same purposes, but it's not a credit card. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea for um, helping those cases where people need a loan. Uh, I think the difference between what the complainants on the list were saying and what uh, Dimitri is saying is the difference between blame and accountability. Uh, as a volunteer org, we're very much doing our good faith best and uh, in that sense, blame and uh, you know culp judgment of culpability is not appropriate. But as Dimitri says, we can still strive to do better, uh, and that's a continual improvement effort. These are both compatible. And uh, pro probably also to the background from uh, from those complaints, um, I think they were mostly from DEPCON 16 uh, visitors. Um, the DEPCON 16 bursaries team um, was, uh, was uh, telling people that they get reimbursed within 40 to 60 days, um, which, um, well, they at least told that to the people requesting the money and didn't knew about the, uh, the other backgrounds that yeah. they were currently. Uh, the expectations were misadvertised, yeah. Um, about the credit card stuff, maybe uh, SPI could get a secured credit card, which effectively is a debit card because you freeze the money ahead of time? Yep, that's probably an option, and we can also gradually build uh, credit on behalf of the entity. Uh, there are ways to solve the problem. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. A to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some of the the progress updates. I, I, I did talk about the finance, financial improvements. So we, we still have a, a long way to go, but we've me, really made a lot of progress on that. Um, we also have annual reports again. 
Um, so we are supposed to present an annual report for our AGM in July. And for a few years we haven't really done that, but, but now we do. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we switched the, the voting al algorithm. So thanks for Ian Jackson for leading the, the discussion around that and, for, and to, to Noodles for actually implementing it. Um, next year we're going to try it. <laughs> uh, Maybe. And then, again, in terms of moving away from a single point of, of failure, so we actually, in the, so we have had a, a PO box, um, which is basically located near our treasurer. Um, and recently we, we signed up with one of those virtual address services, which scan your mail and, and which can deposit the checks. Um, and again, that just allows us to be more independent of, of specific people. And, and, um, and finally, when you send money to a New York registered charity, you send the check to New York. Mm. <laughs> because right. previously you would send it out of state, which did raise questions. <laughs> yeah. And we also have a, a phone number, thanks to, to Luca, because some of the, you know, the signing certificates uh, actually require you that, to have that. Um, because of the face-to-face -face meetings, I think we have some more clarity on, on the mission of what we're actually trying to do. Because sometimes, you know, people ask, well, what about, you know, hosting mailing lists or Git repositories for projects and things like that. And, and, and we decided that's not, you know, there are a lot of solutions for that out there. It's not really what, what we want to do. Um, and then also in terms of how, how do we, you know, work on our mission. Um, you know, should we be running projects ourselves, you know, maybe outreach or whatever, or should we be working through our associated projects? Um, and, and I think there is more agreement that we should really be focusing on, on the associated projects and helping them, you know, achieve what they want to achieve. Um, and then, so various governance improvements I mentioned, you know, moving away from single point of failure, also making it easier to contribute. So we created some on onboarding information, both for new directors, um, but also for, you know, the secretary, for the liaisons of the associate projects. Um, so just making it easier to actually contribute, to join, to, to know what's going on. Um, uh, another thing we've been talking about for years, um, maybe longer, <laughs> decades. Well, whatever. How, how, when was SPI created? Probably, right. Um, 27. Is is to have directors and, and officers uh, liability insurance, um, just to make sure that the the people you know com willing to to contribute their time are, are protected, and it's actually not such a big deal because New York has, has pretty good regulations in, 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 in that area, but it's still, again, as a serious organization and not, you know, a toy, um, it's something that we, we need. Um, and we actually made a, a lot of progress. Um, we joined um, N NPCC, NPCC uh, which is like a non-profit in New York, which helps non-profits, and through them we have uh, obtained a, a quote and, and I just need to actually get around to signing it. Um, the other thing that um, Jimmy has been working on is getting new bylaws. So the, the, the current bylaws don't actually describe how SPI operates. Um, so actually, I, I should mention B there. So he's been leading that effort. And, and then after he left the board, it's, it's now Jimmy. Um, and, and I think we're at the stage where we can put them to a vote fairly soon. Mm -hmm. Um, so in terms of getting involved, so, so I, I think there are some people who think that, oh, I have to be on the board um, to, to volunteer, but, but that's definitely not the case. I mean, we obviously, we want to have, you know, candidates for the board um, so we can actually run an election and test Noodle software. <laughs> um, but, but there are a, a number of people who, who are volunteers now and, and actually Noodles is a great example, so he's been yeah, I mean, I, I just want to chip in and go, um, I stepped on from the board realizing that I was sort of not doing as much as I felt I should do as a board member, but still felt that SPI is an important organization that I wanted to contribute to. And, and as a non-board member, I can get everything I both have the time and the inclination to do for SPI done um, in terms of, you know, being helpful in the member system, being helpful on the website. Um, I, I know that you, you can step up and do stuff without having to be part of the board. And if people have, 
something to offer if you feel they can, they should. Even just being active on the mailing list and getting involved in the discussions that go on in general and private and you know, making it known that there is a community around SPI. And I, I don't know if anyone from other organisations is going to watch the stream, but they should get involved too. There's no need to be a board member to be helpful to SPI. We were also just discussing board internally whether Dimitri, for example, may still have um, read access to the treasurer's uh, uh, repository because he was doing quite a lot of work and identifying where I started to print money within Ledger. Um, and that was very, very helpful um, to, to, to get that review from someone who is also, who had also doing professional work on um, accounting. Mm. Yeah, so we, we definitely open for any help. So if people here, people watching the, the recording, um, we also very open. So our meetings are on ISC. Uh, we publish minutes, thanks to our secretary. Um, and we, we have various mailing lists, so it's very easy to get involved. Um, so any, so that, that's it for me. So any, any questions, any comments, any flame walls, tomatoes? <laughs> I think only Valet heard my answer to this, so I should repeat it for the group. Uh, when you asked when was SPI created, apparently 20 years ago this summer. Happy anniversary. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so definitely not a toy anymore. <laughs> so we should, you know, we should get serious about doing stuff properly. And, and I think we are moving in the right direction. So, yeah, with that, thanks. And also, thank you to Bidel, who ran for president, who was president for 10 years? Five years. Yeah, half. On the board. So, half of the existence. <laughs> <laughs>